Merci, Madame la Présidente. Monsieur Draghi, merci pour ce que vous avez accompli durant euh, votre mandat. Vous avez tout d'abord récemment indiqué que globalement, les, les citoyens européens apprécient les bienfaits de l'intégration économique apportée par l'Union européenne. Et de même, vous avez rappelé que 75% des habitants de la zone euro sont favorables à l'euro et à l'union monétaire. Pourtant, l'opinion publique se montre beaucoup plus sceptique à l'égard des structures politiques de l'Union européenne, à commencer par la machine monétaire euh, que représente la BCE et qui en est l'illustration et, et qui semble très éloignée euh, et incompréhensible pour les citoyens et les entreprises, mais surtout les citoyens que nous représentons. Alors, comment, selon vous, mieux associer l'opinion publique dans les décisions de la BCE, les rendre plus lisibles Comment mieux communiquer Comment nous impliquer davantage, le Parlement européen, dans cette démarche pédagogique Et puis, deuxième question rapide, avec deux mots en réponse. C'est l'heure du bilan, Monsieur Draghi. Après huit années de présidence, de quoi êtes-vous le plus fier et de quoi êtes-vous le moins satisfait En deux mots. Uh, thank you. Now, let me respond to the first question. Um, the euro is the most tangible representation of European integration that uh, our citizens encounter on a daily basis. Over the years, elected representatives and leaders here in other parliaments have rightly recognized that ensuring prosperity and stability over the long term is a challenge that we have to face collectively, and we are stronger together. Today, our economies are integrated to a point that was not imaginable when the euro was designed, and people understand that. Intra-EU exports rose from 13% of GDP of the European Union in 92 to 20% today. But more importantly, value chains are everywhere, as we unfortunately see that when, uh, from the fact that when one country go goes into a recession, immediately this spreads to other countries as well. Second, the euro, if you look at two decades, has delivered price stability and uh, By and large, I think citizens understand that. The point about communication you made is, um, um, has two dimensions. The first is that uh, the, the ECB communication relies very much, in the, in the specific, in different countries, relies very much on the National Central Bank communication. When the National Central Bank supports the ECB policy, communication is very good, is very positive, public opinion is very positive. And that is something that should be cherished and, uh, and kept throughout. The second point is more generally that one should not speak to uh, markets or bankers only, but should also have the language of uh, the people. And uh, I, I couldn't agree more, but I uh, vent a degree of caution here. Uh, the, uh, the, the center, the, it, it, it's quite important that language maintains, the language that's been used maintains the subtle distinction between the central banking and the politician. Uh, it, it's very easy that in order to use the language of the people, one may enter a, a, a terrain, may enter a real that is not central banking, but becomes politics. And that would be detrimental to the ECB independence. So I completely agree with that, with this caution.